I will call the finance committee meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. Um, although Allison is not here, which is, means I need to start panicking about taking notes. Um, Julie? Yep. It's recorded, so you could pull notes off later if you wanted to. I have no real desire to go back and watch it again. Thank you for Right? <laughs> I can take notes. It's just painful enough. Yay, Julie. <laughs> All right, I need space, so I'm going to turn on my desk here. All right. Um, I need a pen. I'm sorry about this. Uh, all right. I have space. I have paper. I have a pen. We are ready to go. So we called to order at 5.01 p.m. We have attendees Jeff Upton, Jim Cambian. Here. Um, somebody else. I'm here. Oh, John Presky. There you are. Here. Um, beautiful. So we have a quorum. Um, all right. I think I'm ready. Sorry about that. Um, so a little preamble to this. We have a long list of budgets that we would like to get through tonight. We may or may not get through all of them. If we don't get through all of them, are you available next Tuesday, one week from tonight, to meet again to wrap them up? Sure. <laughs> Not that it means anything. I know Skip is available, that? he said. Skip is? Yes. OK, good. You're talking the 27th, right? Uh, whatever yes. week night is. Yes, yes. 27th. correct. Yep. All right, at 5 PM, we'll plan on. Oh, beautiful. Hi, Allison. Hi, I'm stuck at the office. Okay. So I don't have my binder, but oh no, I, I can do everything else. All right. Um, so we were just saying that if we don't get through all of the um, budgets tonight, we are going to meet again one week from this evening at 5 p.m. Um, are you available that day? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Um, so with that, why don't we go ahead and why don't we start with the police budget since you have that. Julie, Julie do you yes. want to do you want to address the minutes first? Oh, I do. Of our last Thank meeting. You. Yes. So I will. Uh, I'll make a motion to move the minutes of our 30th, March 30th meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second it, John Pareski. Okay. Um, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Um, Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pareski? Aye. aye. Allison Vandevelden? Aye. All right, that's 500. Zero, zero. Passes. Now we're ready for the police budget. So this is 210 uh, 5110. It hasn't changed from what was originally presented a few weeks ago, and it is at $933,159. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion, Jeff Upton. I'll make a motion to approve the police payroll uh, account number 210-5110 for the $933,159. All right, do we have a second? 
I will second it for discussion purposes. Um, Carolyn, go ahead. Um, I just want to say that uh, Trevor and I had worked very hard to try to get a meeting together with Jonathan Edwards uh, and Tom Feinkevich on March 26 for the Selectman's, Franklin County Selectman's Association to invite all four counties together. Um, unfortunately, it was canceled because it was caused a lot of turmoil and, um, and within our legislative delegation. And so it did, I mean, it did create and, and bring to the forefront that there, there was some huge negative impacts of the police reform bill from a financial point of view. Nobody is disputing the accountability, all that kind of stuff. But what it is, is the you know, impact, long-term impact. So John's budget right now, the police budget, reflects the worst case scenario. We were hoping to have more information and have you know, some kind of resolution of how we can, the impacts would be mitigated. So the select board is going forward with this budget as this is because this budget reflects what police reform is doing to our budget, but um, as it's written right now. But I, I would hope that we will have some fi financial relief or some mitigation happening. I just don't know if it's gonna happen before our town meeting. So I would appreciate, again, the support of the Finance Committee on this budget and that you know, we're, we'll go forward and work together on it um, and see what happens. Jeff Fupton, speak, please. Carolyn, ahead, you're saying that this, this would be the worst case scenario uh, for the police department's payroll budget, correct? Yes, well, it's, it reflects on how the legislation is written currently. What we're trying to do as a select board uh, association, selectmen's association across the state is try to come up with some mitigating or some financial help of some sort, but nothing has resolved and nothing has been moved forward. It's, um, I don't think when the legislation was written that people understood the impact, the financial impact and it takes place on July 1st. So, you know, John has put forth a budget reflecting what the impact will be. However, uh, because we are actually in a good position compared to impacts compared to other communities, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be some resolution, but I just, we don't even have any idea what it is. So um, we're just gonna go forward with this based on current legislation. Another another question, if I may. Sure. Another question, if I may, and and that would that would be if we have a better case scenario once the state uh, works this all out, uh, we any any uh, any funds over budgeted would simply be uh, referred back to free cash, correct? And I hate that term free cash, but the to the well, general fund. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we're hoping is something will happen before town meeting so we can amend it. But um, I just don't know what's gonna happen. We don't, uh, I try to get an indication for this meeting. So um, it might happen after our town meeting and then yes, it would go to free cash. Okay, thank you. Trevor, go ahead. I was just wondering if we could hear from uh, Chief Pachurik on kind of wh why we're where we're at for those either watching or don't have any concept of kind of what happened last year and what the budget looks like and why we're at this spot. I don't know if you wanted to speak a little bit about the issue and the amount of money we're spending now versus last year. Sure, I'm more than happy to. Yeah, Julie, is that okay? Go ahead, please. Okay. So uh, just to keep it really quick, I know we've already addressed this. I'm not sure Trevor was on the other meeting with us, but right. effectively uh, the new state legislation has created one certification level for all of policing in Massachusetts. So what we traditionally did in Deerfield and many of the small communities all the way up through medium sized communities across the Commonwealth was utilize part-time personnel in their called many different names, they're called reserve officers, special officers, reserve intermittents, et cetera, et cetera. But the new legislation 
uh, basically eliminates the part-time police academy. So every new person has to be trained to a full-time standard. The difference is the part-time police academy is just shy of 400 hours. The full-time academy is roughly 900, 960, depending on where they're at today. So there's a, an additional 500, 550 hours. And it's going to be very hard to recruit new personnel that want to try policing and figure out if they're an appropriate fit for Deerfield when somebody has to enter a 950-hour academy versus a 400-hour academy. What we traditionally did in Deerfield was we would sponsor people, which cost the town nothing, to the part-time police academy. We then would hold interviews and, um, and figure out who is the cream of the crop. We would hire them in Deerfield. And then we would uh, have them work for one, two, three, four years. And as there was a full-time opening, we would then yet again select the cream of the crop. The person that really, uh, male, female, doesn't matter. Literally the person that best represented the community and treated the residents like diamonds. So this is gonna be much harder to navigate in, in the future. The new legislation says that prior to entering the police academy, they have to go through a post written exam. They then have to go through a post oral board, not a, a post authorized oral board, but actually an oral board by the post commission themselves. Um, they need to do a, a fitness, a uh, medical, psychological. There's several additional requirements. Some of the stuff we had already been doing, it's not a major change for us, but there's a lot of questions and concerns about how quick this is going to pick up after July 1st, because part-time police academies were shut down in January. The last part-time police academy authorized in Western Mass has already graduated and most of the people have already been scooped up by agencies. So the minute that we start to lose our two or three or four bottom um, folks that like to go to state police, they like to go uh, to federal agencies, they like to go to full-time uh, communities, whether it be Greenfield PD, Montague PD, Amherst or others, it's going to put um, a strain on the budget of how do we backfill those shifts that traditionally we have backfilled with part-time personnel at 18, 20, mm -hmm. $22 an hour. And when you start backfilling it over time and you're paying 35, 40, $45 an hour, now all of a sudden your payroll budget is doubling. So what I did was I added a full-time position this July 1st. And the reason I did that is because every single week we backfill two eve shifts and two midnight shifts automatically. And this additional position would eliminate that. This person would be assigned to those shifts. And basically, it would be a reduction of what we backfill with part-time personnel. But no matter what, it's still going to be a challenge of when we lose people, how do we backfill for va vacation time, sick time, uh, funerals, when we call people in. We all know Deerfield is a tight niche community, and it's not abnormal for two, 300 people to show up to a funeral and me put additional patrols on or Halloween and put seven cruisers out for various areas of the community. So it's going to be a challenge. We'll work through it and uh, make the best we can out of it. But that's where the additional request comes for a full-time position. Thank you, John. Thank you. So the additional full-time position, there's no reduction in the part-time from previous years though, right? No, that's because I, I'm really operating um, in the thought that we eventually are going to be paying overtime. And traditionally, our overtime budget is extremely low. Most police departments our size, the overtime budget is anywhere from forty to eighty-five thousand. Um, I think you're actually going to see those jump as part of this uh, this new reform. But and you see, our overtime budget is twenty-six thousand, and I usually scrutinize it pretty heavily. So what? And Brenda hit me up about that first thing. She goes, "Listen, if you're going to ask for a full-time spot, I mean, one of the first things you should do is." think about a reduction in your other budget. They said, yeah, but I don't know where we're gonna be at with overtime. It's, it's we are really in a transitional year to try and figure this out. And we lose those bottom two, three, four part-time people. It's gonna create a world of hurt on me and the agency. It's not about me. It's ultimately about the town and taxpayers. How many part-time people are there? We have 15, about the top, five to seven are all senior, senior people. They're retired chiefs of police. 
the retired uh, Sa Sergeant Harry Ruddick from Deerfield PD. Gary Sebelius, is the retired Northfield chief. Bobby Worger was a full-time cop with us. Uh, Jesse Rosnick's a captain for Northampton uh, Fire Paramedic. Um, who else we got in there? Joe Michkowski is a retired sergeant from UMass. Chip Thrasher is a retired lieutenant from UMass. So there's going to be five or six that we can rely on. However, they don't want to do midnights. Right. They don't want to backfill eve shifts constantly. Mm -hmm. They want day shifts here or there. They want to grab a detail. They'll help work with two or three eve shifts a month. But once you start asking to do four or five, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm retired. Like, <laughs> did you forget that word? Like, Excuse I'm retired. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's going to be a delicate balancing act. I think Jeff has John, his hand up. John, John Preston, I have a question. Go ahead, John. Um, I can't, can't, I don't know I how to get my hand, hand up. up. I, I, I have two questions. Two questions, Chief. Well, what, one, I guess, is directed at the committee, and the other is a question. Why, are the, in, why the increase on SRO sergeant from 53909 to 64477? Um, there's some step three people that don't have the same kind of increase, Chief. I, yeah, I'd, I, have to, I'd have to see that. He was promoted to a sergeant uh, a year and a half ago. So I'm not sure that that payroll accurately reflects what he's making today. I don't have okay. the sheet in front of me. Maybe Brenda can verify that, but he should only be getting a single step increase and he should already be at it like an S2 going to an S3. Brenda, can you take a peek at that? I, I can answer that. Sure. Uh, last year, because of COVID-19, you um, made a concession of $8,000 in your budget, of which uh, you felt was reasonable to say that we could spend that out of the SRO account. So that came out of his payroll. But, but he was okay. still getting paid the same amount, just some of it was in SRO, some of it was in your regular payroll. Gotcha. So he technically is an S02 right now, and he's going to a, a, an S03 step, correct? Yes. Okay. Does that help, John? Yes. yes thank, thank you. Thank you. My, 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 other my other point, point is, directed is directed at the committee. committee. We're, I don't know how to get rid of this reverberation. Um, I don't know, how, I don't to know how to get rid of the reverberation, but as a committee, we're kind of stuck. If we, if vote, we vote to approve this payroll, then we're, then we're condoning the, the new, new payroll, payroll format. format. So, so as a committee, if we say yes, yes we're saying, we're saying okay, okay, we agree with what the state's doing. doing. And, and, I don't know, I don't know how we get around that, but I have a problem, have a problem voting. voting for this when I don't, when like, I don't the like the whole what's going, what's on, going on overall. Yeah, if somebody can interpret that and repeat it for me, maybe I, I can answer yeah, that. Yeah, so what John is saying is that he's uncomfortable voting for this because by voting for this, we're, I think this is what I heard, John. Um, by voting for this, we are agreeing that the state's load on us is something that we're willing to meet. Yeah, I mean, there is, it is another unfunded mandate and whether yeah. money cycles down to us remains to be seen. I know Carolyn and Trevor and an entire group in the Western Mass delegation, we're going to talk to our legislative delegation and see what they could work out. Um, but I, I don't know when that's going to transpire. And I would not think that it's going to happen before the summer, before town meeting. Yeah, I know I, Allie's got her hand up too. Yeah, I would offer on that, that the, um, to me, the right place for protest around a legislation that's already passed is not in the budget for that year. Um, I do think, I do think there need to be conversations about this, and I think that the financial impact of this is significant. But this change has come about because of advocacy of people, many of whom live in our town and support the legislation. And so I, I would be supportive of this budget at, you know, as is given 
it's the best guess we can do in a transitional year under circumstances that we may not be able to control at the level of the finance committee. So I think that it's a powerful voice to share for, you know, for advocacy purposes from, from the finance committee um, for future changes. But, um, but I don't think that underfunding something because we don't like the legislation is wise. Uh, could, and we did have a conversation at a previous meeting, I think the last time Chief Paturik was here, one of the times before, about, you know, what does this mean? Is this, you know, how we, you know, should we have a conversation about a smaller police department? You know, that was the goal of this legislation, but that's a larger discussion. And, um, and if you look back at the minutes, I think I documented it, it's complicated, right? And mm -hmm. the police department does a lot of things that, you know, people don't necessarily know about. And, um, and, you know, each town in the, in the Commonwealth is different in terms of how their police department is performing and how the residents feel about it. And I think in our town, our residents generally feel fondly about the service of the police department. And so cutting services this year, because we don't like the budget implications, I think could have a pretty detrimental effect um, for the following years. So that's my position on it. I mean, I'm willing to support this budget and recognize that it's not ideal and unintended consequences are sort of the name of the game in public policy. Go ahead, Carolyn. Jeff Upton just, speaking. Hang on, Jeff. Oh. Carolyn's gonna go first and then you go. I just was going to say we are really protesting, John. We're trying. We're trying to protest this very strongly, um, and reducing the services to people and just being disruptive to our police department, which is a good organization, just doesn't seem to be the correct thing to do. I mean, I understand. I mean, I'm just as disgusted as you. But on the other hand, there's not anything, you know moving forward, it just seems like the only thing we can do is just keep protesting. So I, I just want you to know that we are doing something, but you know, not voting the police budget really has no impact except on our, our community and our department. And I, I don't think that's a fair move. Okay. okay. That, that, well, 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 John, also, I think if you mute your video, but you leave your phone alone, you're you may be able to delete that, get rid of that. Yeah. Echo. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Cut that. And that's, oh, that's good. Much better. Your phone, if you want to say something nasty about us all, you would have to mute that separately. <laughs> okay. No. Well, well said, Allison. I, I guess I agree with you. Uh, no, you've said it that way. <laughs> Happy to help. Uh, Jeff, you had something. No, I was just, I was just going to. I add two cents to I agree with Allison and uh, Carolyn as far as the approach here. This is something that has been mandated by the state. Uh, you know, small communities like us, we have to deal with it. I feel comfortable with this uh, as far as the new position because we don't know whether that will be able to be changed or not. But obviously, the select board and other agencies are going to be uh, at least attempting to deal with this uh, with with our our state representatives. So uh, I feel very comfortable knowing that if if this is required, we'll be able to fund worst case scenario. If not, and something happens in the meantime, anything that we vote on this budget, in addition can come back to the general fund. So I, I feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Is the intent, John, um, to hire the new person right away? The intent would be to go through town meeting and then uh, before June 30th, before all those new implications come into play, I would look at backfilling this position. So we want to really figure out if legislatively, if we see some good movement before July 1st, and that's where it's really going to require Casey, Carolyn, Trevor, and David to, uh, to stay focused. And I'm always, always watching it day to day as well. So you would right now, the intent is to hire the new person essentially at the beginning of the 
new fiscal year and have yeah. for the full year. Okay. If there's no changes, Julie. Well, right. um, like I said, we had the four counties, four Western counties, plus Barnstable County. And we were, you know, there's a lot, was a lot of motion and activity for this meeting. And as a result, it was canceled because there was so much, you Ang know, <laughs> angst, yeah. So I, there is something happening, but we can't, we, I have not been able to find out what, what it is and we don't have a timeline, accurate timeline. So that's why we're here tonight. So the, I guess what I'm stumbling over is if, um, and I'm, I'm just discussing, right? I'm not making a statement here, but is that we're going to be really, really tight on capital projects this year. So if we vote this as it is, which it sounds like we're probably end up doing, but we aren't, we aren't there yet. Um, and it ends up coming back to the general fund that doesn't help us with funding the capital projects at town meeting, right? So if, um, for example, we have a nice set of part-time people and we are able to hold on to them for several months and that we don't hire this person until halfway through the year and you make the, um, you may get half of a new position this year and the other half next year, that frees up 25,000 that we could then put towards capital projects. But if that's not an option and you really need this person on July 1, then that's not an option. But that's why I was asking that question. Yeah, and I don't think there's a quick right answer to that, Julie. I think you're spot on as usual. Yeah, meaning we have no money. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, you, other... I'm actually at the forefront of this. I'm actually the one <laughs> leading the charge across the Commonwealth, as our legislative delegation knows. And um, chiefs are calling me select boards from all across the state as I put out multiple directives and emails, and they've been shared all across the Commonwealth. And literally, it's a challenge for me to navigate as well. Some of the small towns are going to be beyond hurting. You take, you know, yeah. Charlemont PD that's got 14 part time folks and they all have to do bridge academies. It's $1,500 of ammunition to do the bridge academy to bring them up to new full time standards per officer. And Charlemont PD does not have a penny. We have several mm -hmm. side accounts. I mean, we, we like to stay very fiscally sound in Deerfield, but we're also, we're not in poverty either. Our, our accounts are there. So some of the towns, they are beyond hurting and they're looking for guidance and there is no guidance. I mean, the state has not even written a bill yet to supply a grant for any of the funding to get through the bridge program for the part-time folks. Oh gosh. Yeah, so. Once they're through it, they're full-time eligible and they'll be looking for a full-time job. So you that's, that's the flip side of it is then yeah. you're gonna start to lose yeah. people everywhere. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's just a transitional year. I mean, the end game is it's all good. We want police accountability. We want to impact the standards and bring them up as high as possible. But we've seen this in other states that uh, bring in post the Police Officer Standards and Training Commission, that it's a transitional period and it's a very costly one. The tiny police departments generally go away. They regionalize or go with larger police departments. And we're just at this learning stage right now in Massachusetts. Does anybody else have any comments or thoughts? Not seeing any hands up. Oh, you know what? I don't have the participants open, so I don't have. Let me. There we go. Uh, Jeff, is your hand still up or? My hand's down. Okay. Um, all right. So we have moved and seconded police payroll 210-5110 for $933,159. Is there any further discussion? I don't see any. Okay, we will do a roll call vote. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. 
Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pareski. With reluctance, aye. <laughs> Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. That's five zero zero. It passes. I hope each one doesn't take this long. We'll be here all week. Um, next, <laughs> Brenda, what you got? <laughs> okay. Thanks, John. All right. Have yeah. Fun. Thank have you, John. Thank, thank you, John. Uh, you know, there were a couple of uh, budgets that we just skipped over. I don't know why, but uh, they were mine. <laughs> so let's start with my salary. It's 135-5110 uh, accountant salary, 54745 We have a motion? I'll make a motion for the accountant salary. Uh, account number 135-5110 for the $54,745. All right, do we have a second? I'll second it. John Pareski. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, I don't see any. We'll do a roll call vote. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That passes five zero zero. Great. Next. Well, then the next one is the accountant expense, 135-5400 for 16,525 dollars. I'll make a motion to move the accountant expense uh, account number 135-5400 for a total of $16,525. Do a second. John, John Pareski seconds. All right. Any discussion? All right, no discussion. I see no hands. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfant, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That passes five zero zero. Next. So the next one is one that we put off because there was a change in leadership. It was the planning board. Um, Anna Lee has agreed to uh, $7,000 for the budget for that um, committee. It's 175 5400. All right, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to move the budget of uh, the planning board 175 5400 for a total of $7,000. Second. All right, second that. Any discussion? Sounds like no discussion. Uh, roll call vote, Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. The next budget that we had skipped over at one point in time uh, for no real reason is 541-5400. It's the Council on Aging. And that is $500. And a motion. I move that we uh, uh, approve the $500 for the Council on Aging. I'll second. second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, uh, roll call. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfan, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vanderbilden. Aye. That passes five zero zero. All right, the next one is uh, the rec. Rec director's salary, it's 634-5110 uh, and uh, the total of that is $50,341. Do 
We have a motion. I'll make a motion to recommend the rec department directory salary uh, account number 60, excuse me, 634-5110 for a total of $50,341. I'll second it. John Pereski. Any discussion? I see no discussion. Roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Pereski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That passes 5-0-0. So um, the next budget is on your, uh, your summary sheet. Uh, it would have been on page four of your summary that I had uh, sent you. The Smith Volk tuition and Smith Volk uh, transportation. Now, when I sent that to you on Friday, we didn't know what the transportation was going to cost. We found out today that it's a little higher than what's on that sheet. So I thought maybe we'd start with the tuition. Um, that is pretty set. We have two students that will be attending Smith Volk this coming year. And so that uh, tuition is 38,000 round it up. Okay. Does everybody see where we are? No. So it's on this, it's on the last page of this one about right here. It's in, it's got black writing. Um, says something or other Smith, chapter 74 comma Smith vocational slash spent tuition. So it's on the very back page of this little thing that came out in our packet this weekend. Going through that now, but I'm not finding it. I am going to share um, my screen. Oh, yeah, that helps. Thanks. So you can see it. Um, whoa, that's too big. Well, that didn't. There we go. Uh, can you see it there? I found them both kind of highlighted. Yep. Oh, okay. Spid. All right. So the 38,000 is uh, what tuition will be. And then the next line is the, is the transportation, but we, I suppose we should vote them separately. We usually do. We should. Um, so do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to recommend the uh, Chapter 74 Smith uh, Vogue tuition of $38,000. Do I have a second? All right, we have a second. So this is um, Smith Vogue. Kids can only go to Smith Vogue if the program is not offered at Franklin Tech, right? That's correct have and it's up to the kids choice right so we have two kids who have chosen programs that are going to be going there and we have to pay for their tuition plus getting them there which was what we'll vote next right right all right any discussion we julie we do this is carolyn we do in fact have the school check to make sure they stay enrolled in the program in the past uh years and years ago we had some issues where kids went there uh, and then they stayed there because their friends were there or they liked being there, but they actually got out of the program. So we do in mm -hmm. fact verify that they are still enrolled in the programs that um, we have to pay for. I mean, we don't have any choice. I know Jeff remembers that. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, any other discussion? I don't hear any, so we'll do a roll call vote. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. John Pereski? We're just voting on the tuition, right? Just the tuition, right. Aye. Allison Vandervelden? Aye. All right. So the next line item is the Smith Vote Transportation, which is just the right. next line down. 
Right, and on your sheets, it's still at 20,000, but we, um, we got a firm number from Gribco today and it's 22.5 for those two students. I'll recommend the Smith Loke uh, transportation at 22.5. Second. Any discussion? How much would it cost to get them a cab? <laughs> Could be cheaper. Uber. <laughs> I'm seriously, this is 50. Could be, but we have to do all sorts of hoops because I mean, it's a this student. Is, this is like 50 bucks a day per, stu per student. Good point. John, um, we're required to do this and we're also required to stay within the parameters of keeping students safe. So you can't just call a cab because there could be Corey Sorry issues. I actually ran into that issue in Ashfield. The only other thing we could do is some sort of a ride agreement with the parents where you pay the parents a certain amount to take the child to school. A lot of parents won't do that. Well, there's insurance issues with that as far as coverage in case of an accident. Uh, maybe not. We didn't have that problem in Asheville because we had oh, between a $250,000 to a $550,000 budget any given year for out of district placement. So we mm -hmm. had to get creative with some students. And this, the way you write the agreement is, is very carefully to protect both the town and the parent. Maybe we should ask the parent. It's a phone call. I have to have an agreement to start with, so I would have to get legal on that. And if that isn't the case, we still have to pay for transportation. In, in other words, if the, if the parent chooses not to do that, the town still has to pay. Can right. one parent drive to I mean, are they two students from separate families? Then you still have the Corey issue, right? Correct. Yep. They're two different students. Um, it's actually, in this case, it's a reduced cost because they're both in South Deerfield. So it's not as far outside of the, the vendor's way. There have been times where it's been more expensive to transport two and three students. We're getting something of a discount because it isn't doubled. In some places it could have been doubled. So I will leave, put that out there for you all to keep in mind. All right, any other thoughts? I'm not hearing any. Do we have a motion? Yep, there is. We do yes. have a motion. Uh, I seconded. Yep. We have a motion and a second. We had a couple questions. I feel like the questions weren't, we didn't really get anywhere with them. Um, I don't know, it might be worth. So we would save some money, but not this whole 22.5, because even if the parents drove, um, we would be paying the parents some amount. Is that what I heard you say, Casey? Correct. All right, I'm not hearing a lot more discussion. Um, you guys good with voting? Yep. Leaving it out there, just in case anybody has any more comments. <laughs> All right, I'm not hearing anything. We'll do a roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Reluctantly, aye. <laughs> Julie Chalvin, aye. John Poreski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. So that passes 500. Zero, zero. The next budget you have a sheet for, it's the OPEB funding. 
um, but it's also on this uh, summary sheet just below the Smith Folk Transportation. So I'll leave that up so you can see the history of it. Um, that is calculated by me uh, based on uh, our policy, which is 4% of the previous year's um, insurance costs. And so, um, last year, I felt like I was a pro on OPEB and could have written a paper on it. But I'm wondering if somebody could give a summary of, of the story, because I know it's chronically underfunded and and just sort of like, why has it come up now? What What is it replacing? Just refresh us and for anybody who maybe doesn't, isn't familiar with it, because it is complicated. Um, somebody could probably explain it better than me, but uh, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, so uh, OPEB is basically our, um, post-employment benefits. So um, it's, it's our liability that's associated with people that, that will uh, take our insurance in retirement of which we pay 50%. Okay. So, so just, just as, a, as a, an example, um, let's say I'm taking insurance, which I don't, but let's say I do, I take insurance, the previous person before me retired and they take insurance and their, their uh, insurance is paid 50% by the town after they retire. And let's say I retire and I'm gonna get 50% paid for by the town. And then the next person in my position is also gonna have insurance. So this is basically the liability associated with all those people retiring um, for which we still have a liability to pay their 50% share of insurance. Um, was this tied to, I mean, it's a, I might be the only person interested in this, in these details, and I can also enough. look it up because there's a ton of articles about OPEB, but was this the result of a change in legislation a while back or where did it, does, does anyone remember? So, so um, the accounting laws, um, uh, GASB uh, started requiring that to be in our financial statements. So when uh, Tom Scanlon does our financial statements, he has to reflect the liability of which our actuary um, determines what that is. And our actuary is um, uh, done, our, our actuarial is done every two years for the town of Deerfield. So the more we put into a fund that um, will um, make us financially um, uh, will we'll, we'll improve our financial position for that particular liability, the, the less the liability is, there's a percentage factor in there um, that they apply to that based on what you have funded already so far. Thank you. I don't know, Casey, yeah. do you want to add to that or Julie or somebody that might know a little bit more about it? I think can the I only thing to... I would add. Can, can I was I just going to the only thing I... Oh, go ahead, John. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's underfunded. <laughs> it's underfunded yeah. tremendously. Yeah. But this is not what the year trying to, to do, what, they, what the accounting rules is trying to do is have it funded during the time the person is working. So we see the cost of Brenda's, if I will use her as an example, the cost of her insurance while she's retired, we're seeing the cost now while she's working. Even though it's gonna be paid for later, they want it, they want to see it in their financial statements now. Thank you, John. That's, John, that's actually one of the clearest explanations. Um, I agree. <laughs> Um, but it is underfunded and we are behind, but this is not the year to try to catch up. So from the OPEB report that we got sometime within the past year, there was a comment in the report, and this is probably not a question for you, Brenda, that, um, we have a number of people who are not Medicare eligible, who are not on Medicare, but we can buy into Medicare, which may be a cost savings. It would cost less to buy into Medicare than it is to provide um, 
different insurance. Do you know if anybody's looking into that? Not that I'm aware of. I it sounds somewhat familiar, but I thought there was a reason that we we wouldn't or couldn't do that. Um, Barbara would maybe be a better one. I thought, yeah, I thought it wasn't a question for you. Um, I'll save that question till for Barbara. And then ask her. Um, do we have a motion on this already? I might have jumped the gun. We do not have a motion yet. I don't think we do. I will no. make a motion on no bed funding of forty-one thousand six hundred and ten dollars. Second. All right, it's moved and seconded. Any further discussion on this? It's, I brought it up before, um, doesn't seem to get anywhere, that we should discuss with bond council what would happen if we funded more or if we funded less, what would happen with our bond rating? We don't know, we're just kind of throwing darts at the dartboard at the 4%. Um, so we'll make an uninformed, uninformed decision, in my opinion. Well, I think that our credit improves, you know, and our and our ability to borrow improves the more this is funded because it is an unfunded liability. How much that is might be a really complicated formula. Um, John, the reason why it doesn't have that much impact at the moment is because the interest rates are tremendously low. There are extra point we get points for having OPEB and voting money into it but mm -hmm. there's hardly any difference my understanding is there's hardly any difference in our loan position because we have excelled on you know our stability and other financial points it, it can't go much lower and so i mean we're pretty darn competitive and we are borrowing at an extremely low rate this this could change tremendously if if the interest rates go up so if it can't get much lower, then maybe we shouldn't bother funding it. At some point, we'll be penalized, John. And I, you know, we're we know we have capital borrowing at this moment for the sewer system, so it is in our best interest to continue to fund it, even at this low level. I. I understand what John is saying, and and actually, I kind of agree with him that it would be a great year to kind of skip this. But at the same time, because we do have the wastewater treatment plant in the large amount of monies that we're borrowing for that, I would hate to see us jeopardize our bond rating uh, at this point in time. So I guess I'm kind of leaning to support this. Do we know? Julie? Yeah. Could I make a comment? I would say one thing to keep in mind to Jeff's comment is if we have a plan in place and we are funding, even on a small level, that's a benefit to the town in terms of our bond rating because you've established that you have a plan. Yeah, good point. What Casey is saying is a track record. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, who is, who do we ask the question of? Um, is it council? Is it? I think we should give that, give the question to Barbara and have her talk to bond council. Julie? Yeah. If, if questions about this still is there any possibility of us tabling this for now and come back That's exactly to it exactly what i was just wondering if we can run that question by barb and if we could get an answer back within a week or two um this might be a, a spot that we can look for some money back I, this I don't i don't think that bond council is going to give us an answer on this because it always depends on what your financial position is at the time of the bonding or the time of the, of the, the borrowing. You, you can't say what is what effect is this going to have. I, I, I think they'd laugh us out of the room. 
Okay. The argument about making a plan and sticking to the plan kind of resonates with me. Um, it's symbolic, uh, you know, of the intention of the town to make progress on this enormous unfunded liability. Um, I'm not inclined to mess with it. I'd, I'd, I would be inclined to vote it as is, you know, looking in towards the future to actually properly funding it, you know, maybe once some of these bigger projects are out of the way. There's never a good time to, to uh, yeah. you know, fund, fund a huge unfunded liability. I don't know. Um, our, liability, don't our liability is in the in is over two million dollars from what the estimates are, and that was what last year, Jeff. If you remember, I can't really remember exactly, but yeah, it, it was over two million. I don't remember the exact number, but I know it was over two million. And so, you know, we're putting away forty one thousand dollars. We're not really chipping away all that much, but if we don't chip away at it. I think it will have a, a bigger impact and we will be paying more. And I would rather put, have us have the track record of at least chipping away and having a formula that we are abiding by than, um, than trying to just pay higher interest rates. Because ultimately that's what it is. Yeah. Well, ultimately we could use the money to pay uh, for the funding of the people that are retired now. Let's it's, it's like, it's like a stabilization plan in a sense. Yeah. Well, we're, right now, John, we're before, seeing currently right? was, our, our, insurance, our insurance line item in, uh, already encompasses the retirees. But what has what been estimated, why it's estimated over 2 million is because in the future, all the other employees that we have now are getting towards retirement. I know that we argued back and forth, is it accurate? Who knows? Mm. But the formulas that they use show we have well over $2 million in liability. And that's just kicking the can down the line, you know, down the road if we don't keep chipping away at it. I disagree with that. Because we're, we're, we're funding this year, we're, if we do OPEB, we're funding twice. We're, we're paying that, for then? the P. Pardon? Yeah, how is, oh, you were explaining. I didn't, I, I, I'm glitchy, so I didn't realize you were explaining. I wasn't trying to interrupt you. We're paying for the people that are already retired this year. And now we're going to put money in for people that will be retiring. Yeah. But I think I, you know, I, I made my point. I guess we should move on. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I would be ready to vote this, but just this, uh, this liability, I mean, I think it's related to the growing, you know, the growing size of the town and the organization, you know, that runs it. And, um, and I think it's kind of, it feels a lot like the social security crisis that we're going to be looking at. I think about my own generation having to you know, fund these costs for retired people, you know, and knowing that there is not going to be that money to fund the cost for my own retirement. And so this is an effort to not kick the can down the road in a way that expands every year and gets bigger and bigger. If we fund it now, it costs us less over the long term, although the term is really quite long and we're setting up a, we're setting up a system where you know, every year, in theory, we would be paying this year for that future cost. Um, right now, we are paying both because we haven't ever funded this before, but GASB also requires it. So, yeah, know, we've I, always done pay as you go before, and now we're trying to put money aside to pay in the future. And it's not just us, this is a, this is a huge issue. Yeah. So the town size is has been the same for at least 30 years, 
we've been right around 5,000 for years and years and years. So it's, it's not, the town size is not going up. No, it's the number of employees. Working, the number of employees is going way up. And if you look at the OPEB report that they did, the number of retirees we have now, and then as you go year by year, that number goes way up. And understand part of that is the time you can expect the employee to work before retirement. Even if we're funding current retirees, we need to be putting money aside for the expectation of retirees in upcoming years. That's really the purpose. Right. Where does the money sit? Like, where is it? It's in a trust, which by definition should be earning us some money. We took a vote back in, was it 2015 or 2014, Brenda, to create the trust? I think it was 2014. I can't remember the year. And essentially what you do is what you put aside goes into the trust and it begins to earn money over a period of time. It's when I heard about this and I started freaking out. It's been a while. (laughs) I'd just like to say that I... I understand and agree with John with what he's saying. And, and I think he's got a very valid point there. My only problem that I have is looking in the future here with the possibly the major projects that are going to be coming down the road for this community. And I would hate to put us in a position where we would have an adverse effect on our bond rating. Right now, percentages aren't bad. They're fairly low. But down the road here, three, four, five years, they may not remain low. Uh, We don't know what's going to happen. And we have projects that could very well play out for several years ahead of us in major projects. And I would hate to see that bond rating uh, get impacted negatively because of the $41,610. But I definitely understand where John's coming from. So Jeff, to, to paraphrase an answer based on what your comment was, if we stay the course and continue to put money aside, The town is demonstrating it's making an effort to meet the OPEB uh, liabilities in the future. And that with bond council, that will make an impact because they do reflect it. There isn't a requirement to put a certain percentage aside. What they look for is a commitment from the towns to address the liability over a period of time. Correct. That's basically a good paraphrase. And as you all know, I I haven't been a big supporter of this right from the beginning, but I do understand that. Do we have any, anybody else have any comments? Thoughts? All right, so it has been moved and seconded for OPEB funding for $41,610. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Reluctantly, aye. Jim Gambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pareski. Oppose. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. So that's 410 and that passes. It's like Bethany has joined us. Do we want to move to those? Yeah, Beth, Beth is here. I saw, oh yes. So um, Beth is here to talk to us about the uh, swim program and the Tritown Beach budgets. Um, let's, just, let's just start with Tritown Beach. I think that'd be the better one to start with. And that is 630-5410. And right now we've got that budgeted for 18,988. Um, the, uh, 
I, I'm just going to let Beth start. Are, are you ready, Beth? To... Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Um, sorry, Brenda, about not being able to be on at my scheduled time. Um, I apologize. Thanks for having me. Um, so I have been on the um, Tritone Beach Commission, I think, for about five or six years. Um, the last few years have obviously been a little challenging, um, given the pandemic and our pandemic of our weed infestation um, for the past three years at the, at the beach. Um, so we have um, had a couple new members from Waitley join, which was great. So we have, I think there's four commissioners now, two from Deerfield and, oh no, there must be five, three from Waitley. Um, and we have had one meeting all together and our preliminary conversation centered around, should we open or should we not open given the um, pandemic and given the issues with the weeds um, that are filling the beach. So I think we all have all voted and agreed that it would be a good year to regroup, um, fix up the beach, get it ready to come alive again. Um, most of us have um, a desire for it to be a great attraction for the towns. And obviously we know that comes with work, time, money. So um, we are planning on not opening and what we would like to do with the money that's um, allocated to us is to start the process in cleaning the beach up and doing some renovations that are much needed. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you have been there, um, but it's, it's just worn and tired. And I think if we want to make this a place that families wanna go, we have to put some fresh life into it. So we are in preliminary stages of finding out what those costs are going to be. Um, the biggest hurdle is finding out what we can do to control the weeds. Um, and that comes with a huge amount of environmental things that we have to be careful of. So that's been a process. Um, the bathrooms, the bathhouse is in does dire need of plumbing um, and um, nothing that hard work, um, some volunteers and possibly some local plumbers that might give us a good discount. Um, but we are starting to gather the information to be able to present um, what we see the beach looking like in the future. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, River Valley Day Camp is a big um, group that visits the beach and keeps our summer alive. They are there Monday through Friday. Thursdays, they tend to be off. Um, they bring about 70 kids to the beach for three and a half hours. Um, and then as far as members, that's, I think we're around 100 to maybe 130 families um, that give or take, but there's definitely a need, I think, and it's a nice, I'd hate to see it close, um, but it's, it's just, it's going to be a process. So we'd like to see if we could start with our budget to kind of have that as our starting point. Um, to get it ready to open next year, um, looking new and inviting. So um, the swim program itself, I'll talk about that a little bit. A um, couple years ago, we had um, our swim instructor, Jay Yankowski, um, resigned um, and our swim program kind of ended there. Um, it was difficult to find an instructor and safety became an issue. Um, so we would like to also bring back the swim program. Um, again, uh, we need to figure out the weed control in order to do that. So that's kind of where we're all at and what we're kind of working on. Um, and I don't know, Brenda, if I need to touch on anything else. Well, could I um, maybe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I want to just kind of put this out there and then you can correct me if I'm wrong. But 
the budget that we have set is assuming we were going to be open. Um, but Beth is asking that we redirect that budget to, I, there's going to be some ongoing costs. There's going to be the insurance. There's going to be, you know, some uh, lawn mowing and other maintenance that's going to happen anyway, but redirect the rest of that towards uh, fixing everything up to where it should be and getting rid of the weeds or taking care of, of that problem. But I understand Waitley is also willing to put forth um, money towards this, maybe even more than what we're suggesting in this specific budget. Um, she's just asking Deerfield to consider spending 18988 towards that this year. Is that right, Beth? That's absolutely right, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, do we have a motion? I have a, okay. I'll make a motion for the Tritown Beach expense 630-5410 for uh, 18,988. Second. Second. We have a second. Okay. Um, any further discussion or any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. would like to make clear, just want to make clear that, so basically what we're saying is the, the area, the beach would not be open this year for public use. It would be uh, summer focused on uh, bringing it up to speed as far as maintenance for the 19,000. Yes. Is that correct, yes. Beth? That is correct. Okay. All right. So, uh, and then you had mentioned uh, River Camp. What do they uh, contribute for a summer when they use that? Um, it's about $500 for the season. For the season? Yep. And they're bringing roughly 70, 70 students per week there? Correct. And I believe that has and how many increased ever. <laughs> How, how many weeks does that run? Um, we generally, they start the week of the 4th of July and then they are there till the first week of August. Okay. So four or five weeks, something like that. So if you, assuming you open next summer, um, you'll open before the 1st of July Right. Yeah. So you would have to cover some lifeguard. Yeah, we usually open in June. We we like to open that first weekend that school is closed. Once school is out, we like to be that weekend to kind of celebrate. So it's generally the third weekend of June. And then we typically try to go until August 15th, usually. Um, by then we're losing our guards to go to college and you know, they're you know, they're not as thrilled to come to work anymore. Well, you mean I'm taking direction from myself. Okay. Do you guys do any fundraising? Just ask for donations? We haven't. That We did talk about that because that obviously would have to be um, something we would um, need to probably do what we would want to do. Um, you know, we talked about obviously Yankee Candle and the local, you know, um, kind of um, making some visits just to, to see what their thoughts were about supporting the community. Or even just going out to the people who usually join for the year and say, you know, we're not going to be open, but if you can and want to. Yeah. Hang the transfer station and get donations. What's that? Hang around the transfer station on Saturday through the can. I'm not kidding. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. Is there, Beth, is there any way as far as, has there been any increase for the river camp and that? I know camps try to keep fees reasonable and, and so on and so forth, but I'm just looking at uh, the expense, you know, with our with our lifeguards and to cover those students during that use. 
and five hundred dollars for what is it like three weeks or so? It's probably a good is four a weeks when it. Okay, so four weeks. So you take a look at that, and how long are they there per day? They're there about three to three and a half hours. So that's a that's a pretty good deal, and I, uh, you know, like I say, I I understand everybody's trying to be as careful as they can with their budgets, but uh, you know, I I don't know if there would be any possibility of sitting down and having a little discussion with them as far as uh, what they what they pay for that use, five hundred dollars for four weeks for you know, three and a half hours, four days a week or five days a week, whatever it is, you know, with with the towns paying for the lifeguards, that's that's a that's a pretty good deal for them. So absolutely. Uh, I'll, and I, I can bring that to their director. Um, she's well aware that it's a great deal. I think we all have just been doing what's been put in place and um you know, with the improvements, we, you know, I would feel much better saying, hey, you know, we're going to do all this, you know, we're going to have to increase. Um, I think she'd be very open to that discussion. Um, and about two years ago, I, we made a decision to increase the amount of lifeguards at the beach during that time, because I was not comfortable with the ratio. Many kids, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wasn't comfortable with the ratio, so we increased it. And um, definitely our budget um, showed that in the last few years. Um, I just, I couldn't in good good conscience not have extra, because, you know, 70 kids in that pond is is a lot. Right, no, I, I agree with you, Beth. I, that was a very good decision. That's, that's a handful, 70, 70 kids in one area. Yeah. I, I confess I'm, I'm a little confused about something. The pond will be closed to the public, but still open to the day camp? No, no, okay. no, no. It would be closed completely. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. I, I think right. I just, and I, I probably mixed that all into one giant sentence. Um, I, I was a little confused. I was, yeah. I was thinking that it would be a little hard to sell at the town meeting, you know, that nobody can go here except this group that's. Yeah, no, we, we, we would not do that. No, I, they are just, you know, it will be, that will be what will be affected the most will be that group. Yeah. Do we have any idea? Dear, what Waitley's looking to do financially? <laughs> no, I'm gonna. I'm still waiting on that. I will um, reach out to the Waitley commissioners and see um, what they found out. My concern. If it's my turn to speak. Um, I I think the beach is great, and it doesn't even work. I agree with you, and I'm sure you would do your best to make it improved as much as you can for $18,988, or I guess it's $24,660. But I would hate to have some taxpayer walk up to me and say, you're on the finance committee. Um, did you approve what Tritown Beach, was? the money was being spent on ahead of time? And we're not. We're really saying, you can take 24,660 and spend it the way you think is best. And it may be the best, don't misunderstand me. Um, I just think that we need to, as a committee, we have a responsibility to do some due diligence and oversee what's going on there. And by looking at these numbers, we're not overseeing it. No, I absolutely agree. And, you know, I'm, unfortunately, we don't have the information because we just kind of came to this decision and, and there's going to be a lot of legwork to do. I wouldn't expect mm -hmm. to spend any amount of money until it was approved. I certainly don't want that responsibility. What, what I would like to see happen is to create a list um, of the most important thing and then work our way down with the costs and then bring it to the finance committee and say, this is what we would like to do and this is the order we would like to do it in. I certainly don't want to make that decision. I don't think anybody on our committee does. Um, just knowing that we have the opportunity so that we can go ahead and do the legwork, that it might be a possibility, will be um, 
what it's really what we're looking for right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you know, generally, so look the question at individual. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I I I was going to say. I guess the question would be here in what Beth just said. Would we be better off just putting this on hold for uh, you know two, three, four weeks and give her and her committees an opportunity to try to address some of John's questions and come back to this at a later date? I think we should table it for now and let her do the best she can. I realize there's not a lot of time left and there's going to be some big estimates involved, but. My question is to, to Bethany, I mean, do you think, do you think there would be some more, like some significant information in addition to what you already have within a few weeks? Or do you think, I mean, how long do you think it might take to get some of, more of the details that the committee is asking about? Um, details meaning the the um, the list of items that we would like to do and how much they cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, as you know, it, during this pandemic, every builder and plumber they're they're out straight. So I can definitely um, get together with the committee um, in the next few days and start that process to see what we can do. Um, I certainly can. Um, try to have something for you in the next couple of weeks, um, at least a list and hopefully some estimates just so it gives us an idea. Cause we might be totally out of the ballpark. Like you said, like, you know, the plumbing over there might just be a nightmare. We don't want to uh, open up the box, but um, I can definitely get that started. I just, um, I'm going to need some help. So I, I'll reach out to the committee to see how fast we can get that information to you. Yeah, my, my feeling on it is if, if it's feasible to get more information in the time frame we're looking at, then that would be great. Um, if it's not realistic, you know, I'm always a fan of, uh, you know, approving the, the minimum version of something and then coming back to it if we need to. But, um, but it sounds like you think we might actually be able to get, you know, that, that list and yeah, I, I would really like to be able to give you at least a list and, and a ballpark. You know, I can call some local plumber. You know, the biggest thing is going to be that bathhouse is really, you know, we want to take down the bob wire that's surrounding the bathhouse, which we're not sure why that was even put there. Um, that's really going to be the biggest expense and stuff that we are not going to be able to do as a committee and, you know, with friends and volunteers and stuff like that. So. Cool. When something is surrounded yeah, exactly. by the wire, definitely find out why it's there first. Yeah, I, if you take I, it down, you'll find out why. Yeah, yeah. I think that I, I want to say that people were breaking into the bathhouse like after hours. Um, you know, years ago, kids were like breaking into the bathhouse, but I, I don't, I don't know. The bob wire has always bothered me. So be werewolves. Yeah, I yeah yeah. Funny. <laughs> You know, the biggest thing is going to be this is the weeds like, you know, we could manage to open the beach. Um, but the weeds are such there's such a problem and I at points I find them to be dangerous because their kids can get tangled up in them and you know. Um, we paid guards all summer too. they really were not lifeguards they were weed pickers and a lot of them didn't want to come back because that's not what they were hired to do so you know. Um, this new generation, you know, I wasn't hired to do that. So, you know, trying to make it a little bit easier, more inviting to work there. So we don't generally, when we vote a budget, we vote the bottom line and it's up to the person in charge of the budget to allocate it as needed and they can swap them around from line item to line item and we don't generally comment on that, right? Question to the finance committee. So um, I, I actually kind of feel like if you come to us now and say, here's my list of things I wanna do, um, and I will work down this list and do as much as I can with 
the 24,000 or whatever it is total. Um, it's the department head who decides. So I assume it would be your group of commissioners who decide the allocation of the funding. Um, I would be open to voting it now. Um, the, only, the only thing with that is if you don't know your line items, how do you know your bottom line? Right. I, we are spending an awful lot of time talking about a fairly small budget. That's the other yeah. piece of it. Um, so if you the only thing ahead, I'd like to just say <clears throat> is that um, some of this is capital improvement um, should be a capital improvement request maybe. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, if, uh, somebody could, if somebody could just help me with, with the minutes, I don't, because I'm stuck at work, I don't have the sheet in front of me. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a number of 18, 988, and then a number of 13, 10. What is the $24,000 number? So 8988 is our portion of a 24,660. Thank you. 5,672 is paid by Waitley. Okay. They pay 23% is what the form says. A note of that is your book question. Thank you, that's helpful. So regarding the capital piece, can we argue that, oh gosh. So if it is indeed capital, it's missed the boat on the capital planning thingy. Um, can we argue that it's maintenance? Some of if it? If it's less than $5,000. Huh? Yeah, you can argue that, yeah. I think the weeds are maintenance. The repair of the bathhouse is probably capital, but if it's under 10,000, then it would not need to go through the capital planning. That is correct. Julie, you are, you are correct. The biggest thing, you know, we talk about capital, but you have to have a, a specific project uh, in a specific request to make sure it's over that $10,000. And, you know, you, you, once again, you have to come back and you have to be careful of your bylaw language. And right now, I couldn't vote this thinking <laughs> that we take some money out of capital to help pay for this. Because you don't have a specific project and you don't have a specific dollar amount. So we don't even know if it would meet the criteria of the capital improvement plan, as far as the bylaw language. Yeah. Julie, can I ask a question? Please. The bylaw language, I've got it right in front of me because I'm writing Jeff an email <laughs> um, as I'm listening. The bylaw language requires the project to be $25,000 or more and the improvement to have a useful life of 10 years or more. Oh, it's 5,000. For the building. For the building, it's twenty five thousand or more rehab of a building in that. For fixed it says asset, any infrequent which, rehab of a major repair of a building, grounds, or related equipment. Right, exactly is twenty five thousand. So twenty four six sixty is a beautiful number. <laughs> we'll move on. Um, so I heard it sounded to me like. Bethany was willing to go off, talk to the commissioners and come back to us with at least a list of projects that you would like to tackle within this funding and if possible, some estimates for that. Um, so we do have a motion on the, we have a motion, right? Correct. Um, and you made it, Jeff? Yes. We have a motion to approve the budget as presented. We have a motion for the Tritown Beach budget. Um, Jeff right. made the motion by second, and we do not have a motion for the other portion, the swim program yet. Right. I'll make yeah. a motion. Um, I'll make a motion that the Tritown Beach expense uh, uh, decision, the finance committee's decision, be tabled, and that hopefully Bethany can come back 
with a list of what they expect to spend the money on. So does Jeff need to- with, in, in, Understanding that there's gonna be estimates. Um, if you hang on to that just for a second, I think what we actually need to do, I think Jeff needs to just withdraw his motion. Right, I will withdraw my motion at this time. And Allison, would you like to second his withdrawal since you? Sure, I'll second that. Okay, so now we have no motion. So now we don't need to worry about it. We can just not address this tonight. Um, we are meeting, I think, next week and the week after. Um, if um, we'll just be in touch about when you want to come back with that piece. Um, let's go ahead and look at the summer swim program piece. Um, so the so the amount of the thirteen hundred and ten is basically. Um, what it might cost in June of 2022 when they open for the swim program. So that's just a, an amount sitting in there um, in case they do open in 2022. I'll make a motion to approve this item, the swim program at 1310. I'll All right, so it's been moved and seconded for the summer swim program, 630-5400 for $1,310. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. <laughs> John Boreski? Aye. Allison Vanderbilt? Aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. Okay, so uh, Beth, you want to just get together with me or let me know um, what might work for you for May fourth as far as the time to come to the committee. We we meet from five to seven. If you want to put me on for six, that would be great. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you, Beth. Bye. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. It's probably at work. It's great that somebody's taken on Tritown Beach. That's we're trying. Here. Thank you so much for your work, Beth. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Yep, you do too. Thanks. You too. I think um, before uh, Chuck Shattuck shows up for the assessors, uh, we could go to the next budget. What do you think, Julie? Yes, let's do that. So the next budget on our list was the 350th celebration. We do not have a budget sheet for that. That's just um, another $10,000 to set aside uh, that could be used towards the celebration um, when, we, uh, when we do that. Carolyn, did you have something to add to that? I, I just wanna say that um, we're, the town is going to front you know 10,000 for a couple of years towards the celebration. And the idea is so it's not a huge fi financial impact in the end, but we're, we would spend fundraising money um, first, and then, and if we don't spend this money, it will be just returned to the general fund. But there are some things that um, you know we have to do beforehand, and that was why we're funding it now, and it will have less impact by doing it a little bit, in the, you know, every year between now and 2023. We have one more year that we wanna, you know, put money aside. So this, so this uh, money that, that gets allocated to the 350th actually goes into a special revenue fund and it can't be spent until July 1st of 2022. So it could be spent the year before, the year during, and then the year after. So that's, that's what Carolyn's referring to there. Yeah. So there are some things on the capital plan that had to do with the 350. There's like a wooden cake or something and some other stuff. I put it there because we don't know. I mean, it's coming from Hatfield. It needs to be renovated. We, and there was a question on how much Hatfield was going to charge for it. And because um, they had to buy it from Westfield. And then you have to renovate it a little bit. So I was worried that it might be more than what we had. It, this money isn't, you know, um, the it's on the capital plan, so it's 100% transparent. But the idea is to fundraise to do that, um, you know, have it come to town. And the same as the display case, we're hoping to have 
um, Deerfield Academy uh, build us another display case like they did in the town hall already for um, the uh, memorabilia. But again, it's our we we need a case if people are people are turning stuff over to us already, mm -hmm. and we have to have it in some place that's you know safe. So um, I'm hoping it will be a donation, but if it's not a donation, you had to have have it on the capital plan because it is a major project. And Julie, just to let you know, the the capital improvement committee uh, moved the ten thousand dollars for both the cake restoration and the display case into the FY 2023 year. So it is not funded for FY 2022. And we figured we'd fi uh, address that with the finance committee. And, and by then we will know, um, you know, how much is gonna be offset by fundraising and donations. Right. So we're not- That was- that, that was. can't spend this $10,000 until 20, whenever Brenda- just Well, you can spend it, we don't need it. Of July 1st, we can start spending money because it's a year before. We're in fiscal 20, okay. uh, July 1st. So it's a okay. year before and a year after, you know, if you had outstanding bills or damage to something or whatever, or replacing something. Okay. I will, I will recommend the $10,000 for the 150th birthday celebration for the town. 350th, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, 350, excuse me. All right, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I, yes. I, go ahead. Um, ironically, we just took the swim, the beach program, and we said you have to go back and give us more information on what you're going to spend $24,000 on. Now we're voting to spend $10,000 um, for we don't know the details. And I, I understand that's the way it is. It's, I'm just want to point it out. It's kind of ironic. Well, that, uh, John, that, if you remember yeah. last year, we um, brought the Conway's budget, we bought, brought Sunderland's budget, and uh, we had Hatfield's proposed budget, and they were all around uh, $200,000. So we figured that we would anticipate raising at least $150,000, but um, we felt the town should contribute at least thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars in that range, um, and then we'd fundraise the rest. I don't have a problem with it. I just think we're being inconsistent in our thinking as a as a committee. That's well, all. I'm done. I appreciate I that attention. Me. That attention to consistency, <laughs> and uh, I think I think if I had time, I could articulate exactly why you know this one's different than the other one but um it's not worth the energy i think but i, I appreciate that attention to the detail i think we're all ready for a party so just vote yes <laughs> i have to say regarding uh, the cake, i do find myself wondering what did they do to it well you have to repaint it i guess so <laughs> Well, well, actually, Jim, actually, Jim, it just depends on who's going to jump out of it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So we have a yeah. motion and we have a second. Yes, we do. Is there any further discussion? All right, let's do our round robin. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Poreski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. So we do have uh, Chuck with us, Chuck Shattuck uh, with the assessors, right, Chuck? Uh, yes, yep, I'm on. Great, so uh, we can move to the assessors budgets. Um, the very first one is 141-5100 and that's the assessors salaries for $11,000. That hasn't changed. Correct. No change from last year. We have a motion. 
I'll make a motion to approve assessor salaries count 141-5100 for $11,000. I'll second. All right, any discussion? Doesn't sound like it. A roll call vote, Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Camby? Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Pareski? Aye. Allison Vanderbilt? Aye. That passes five zero zero. Well, the next budget is for the assessor's administrative assistant. Her salary it's one forty one dash five one one zero, and that's sixty six thousand six thirty one. Just reflects a step increase. I make a motion to approve assessor's administration administrative. Assistant salary account 141 5110 for 66,631. All right, it has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'm just noticing again that this is all that's on here is a step increase. And with the step increase, that's a 3.94% increase. I'm not arguing it at all. It, it, Karen's awesome, but. Um, the uh, it's just our our salary schedule is pushes us into this. It's true. I I agree with you one hundred percent, Julie. You know this was a was a fairly large issue a couple of years ago, and it was basically uh, ended up being a deadlock vote uh, as far as the finance committee and it ended up going to the annual town meeting and being approved. Uh, you, you could see these raises coming and it was addressed. But uh, as I mentioned before, a few weeks ago, hopefully people that are involved with the uh, salary schedule will actually stop and really take a look at what's been happening the last few years. As I said, uh, as far as I'm concerned, most people, most people, they're doing their jobs and doing a good job, definitely deserve a raise, there's no question about it. Uh, but at the same time, we have seniors, uh, senior citizens that are, what, 1.6 on social security, that's pretty tough to take for them. Right. Any further discussion? Just had to get our soapbox out for a sec. Does somebody have a comment? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right. That passes five zero zero. Well, the next. Uh, uh, budget is the assessor's expense budget, which is uh, level from last year. It's 141-5400 and it's for 23125 I'll make a motion uh, to move the assessor's expense account 141-5400 for $23,125. I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded for the assessor's expense. Um, Chuck, do you wanna highlight any of the big items on here or say anything about it? Um, nothing really noteworthy. Most of it is just, like I said, uh, you know, static from last year, no significant changes. Um, I guess the one note is uh, conferences. We kept it level, although we're not sure exactly if conferences are going to be in person, um, yet to be determined. But if you have multiple day sessions, um, we just felt keep the budget, you know, consistent with last year, see where, see where it goes. So the, um, the title searches showed up last year on here. Did they used to be on a different budget? Is that what happened? Uh, they were not on a different budget. Um, Chuck, I'm not sure. I can't remember why, why we had to add those to you. Do you know? Um, they used to be on 
town clerks and got shifted over to assessors. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yep. But it's consistent with what was there previously, just different budget. Do we get reimbursed from for those? Is that in revenue somewhere, a line item in local revenue, Brenda? No. No, this would be title okay. searches for, you know, like unclaimed property, um, things like that, right, Chuck? That's correct. Oh, okay, our real estate, all right. Yeah. Any further discussion? Doesn't sound like it. Uh, roll call vote, Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Poreski? Aye. Allison Vanderbellen? Aye. That passes five zero zero. Okay, so the last uh, assessor's budget is the quinquennial research recertification, and that's 142 5400 for $20,000. Also, no change from prior year. What's that? Just saying uh, it's a contract with Patriots and no change from prior year. Yeah. I think, uh, Chuck. Uh, maybe clarify for me. I think the um, there was some question this spring that maybe you would have to increase that for some additional work Patriot was going to do, but it sounds like you as the assessors have decided to take that on yourselves. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So I think the only incremental is uh, purchasing books, which I think is covered in I think it's already covered in the budget, correct? Is covering what? I'm, I'm, yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. Yep. Sorry, I'm just confirming with Karen, but okay. um, yeah, so that's already covered. Yep. I'll recommend assessor's recertification account number 142 5400 for $20,000. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All right, um, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Poreski. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. All right, thank you, Chuck. Appreciate you coming for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. You Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Julie, do you want to start with a couple of the school budgets and see how far we can get by uh, 655 or whatever? Sure. <laughs> is that all we have left is school budgets? We're not going to get them all done by seven. I'm kind of ready. No. To stop. Ready to quit? Yeah. Um, okay. So. Our next meeting will be next Tuesday, the 27th at 5 p.m. And we will do school budgets. Is there anything else on our list left? Can you just, um, you said next Tuesday. 27. So it's an extra meeting that we didn't have scheduled before. Um, and it's at 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. Yep. Um, we'll do so. The plan is to get through the rest of the budgets, except I guess the Tri Town Beach one next week. And then the fourth, we will look at how it all comes together and what we're going to do about capital. And, and there are a couple of budgets, well, at least one that I know of that will want to re vote. Um, and, and that would be uh, interest on maturing debt. Um, our interest rates are thankfully less than what we had originally budgeted. So I'm adjusting interest on that uh, as we go. Um, oh, I had another thought. Oh, wastewater treatment. So um, there are some things that are going on with the wastewater treatment plant and some decisions that have to be made about the pipe, um, the pipe replacement. So uh, Maybe by next week, we might have a better idea as to what that might be, and we can maybe finish voting that budget. But that's that's it as far as I'm aware of. Thanks. 
All right. I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Any discussion? No. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Presky. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. I think we're done. We'll adjourn the Slickman meeting. I'm the only one here. <laughs>